Okay, um, it's Belisi and Lenny talking about you know, one chunk of Unit 16, the chunk about um, indirect sentences, what the book calls indirect sentences and what we're calling embedded sentences, okay? Embed an embedded sentence, here's the definition, okay, is, um, is a sentence inside another sentence, okay? And, um, and basically, in what, what uh, only certain kinds of verbs can be the, the verbs that uh, introduce or that are the framing sentence uh, for are the framing verb for an embedded sentence. So it comes down to verbs of seeing, verbs of knowing and thinking, and verbs of perceiving. So it's I see you are happy, I know you are happy, um, I think you are happy. Okay. Um, those those are the kinds of verbs, and there are several of them in Greek, as there are many in English, that introduce uh, are the framing verbs for embedded sentences. Okay, um, and uh, in Greek there are three ways of doing embedded sentences, depending on what the actual verb, and I don't mean by one of those classes, it varies from one verb to the next, and they can be in you know different verbs that belong to the same semantic class can have different syntax. So just to, to, to lay it out, um, we put an example of the first type on the, on the green board there. Um, this is a verb, horao, the verb to see, that governs um, the first kind of embedded sentence in which the subject of the embedded sentence goes in the accusative case. That's the pronoun se, which is the accusative of su, okay? Um, and the verb of the embedded sentence is a participle, okay? So when you're actually translating sentences like this, you have to be keyed in to the notion of the meaning of the, of the embedded verb, right? Mm -hmm. The way you recognize them, just as in English, you can tell that it's an embedded sentence because you know uh, um, that certain verbs introduce them. In Greek, you have to learn the ones that do that, but yeah, you can think about it as you as you come across them. But it doesn't I never always have them. Okay, you can just say I saw Julius Caesar, but you can also say I saw that Julius Caesar cross the Rubicon, right? And then you've got a sentence, right? So, so it, it, they can either be simple sentences or they can, can introduce embedded sentences, right? Um, so. Uh, it depends, it changes from one verb to the next, and you have to kind of learn which ones take which construction. On In our book on page 470 at the bottom, there's a list of the verbs, of the verbs of saying, knowing, thinking, and perceiving that introduce embedded sentences and which construction they take. Okay, it's laid out for you there. It's pretty simple, okay, when you get down to it. I don't, you know, as a reader of Greek, you, you learn pretty quickly which verbs do which ones, right? Mm -hmm. Did, yeah. Is there anything in your head about that that you that you use as a key to remember? Um, mostly just in general, the types of verbs that will take any of these constructions, because uh -huh. as long as you at least know those verbs, then you, uh -huh. you look for it immediately in the set, in the yeah. text, yeah. and then you know it's easy to spot if you, you know you're looking for an you, accusative yeah. or Yeah, so or. with any of the verbs, you know yeah. to look for one of these constructions, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's cool. That's a, that's a way of simplifying the process. <laughs> so you got to be alert for the, these possibilities once you're in this kind of semantic territory of a verb of knowing, thinking, or perceiving, perceiving. right? Mm -hmm. All right, so, so the first one is the construction of which you have, uh, to resume, a, a subject in the accusative case and a verb that's a participle, okay? And, and it's verbs of perceiving, like seeing, hearing, and stuff like that, that generally take learning, understanding. Those kinds of verbs generally take this construction. So what we're looking at in, the, in our sample sentences, hero, I am seeing, or I see, the present of the verb horao in the first person singular, the accusative of the of the personal pronoun, we've given you the unstressed one, horo se, bukalon anta, and you've got that's the present participle of the verb to be in the accusative singular, agreeing with the se, okay, assuming the se is masculine. So I see that you are, and that's what that's the way we do it in English, or I see you are, and bukalos is the word for cowboy in Greek, okay? I see you are a cowboy. Now, here's something interesting that's a variation on this. If, if it's somebody else that's doing the perceiving, if, we, for example, it's 
you see uh, that you are a cowboy, okay, and the you in both cases is the same, or I see that I am a cowboy. Let's take that example. Horo, uh, uh, here's what you do. When the subject of the verb of saying, knowing, and thinking is the same as the subject of the embedded sentence, you do something different in the cases where you have uh, subject accusative and either the infinitive of the, of the par or the participle, and it makes sense. What you do is you can suppress the subject of the embedded sentence, and you keep the participle, uh, if you wish, in the nominative case. So you say horo, no pronoun, bukalos, nominative, okay, on, okay. Uh, I don't know if anybody would actually ever say this, but you could say I see that I am a cowboy, right? <laughs> So, so the important thing is that you, the subject of accusative construction only applies if the subject of the verb of saying and the subject of the embedded or saying, knowing, and thinking of the framing verb, in other words, is different from the verb of the, the subject of the embedded sentence. Okay, um, so we're going to see how to do this in the in the other construction. So let's now shift to the second option. That's we just did subject accusative verb participle. Now we're going to look at subject accusative, verb infinitive. All right, And here we have a verb of thinking. This is a new verb in this lesson. Nomizo means I think. It comes from the notion of namos, custom. Okay, but So it's an interesting development that means I think or suppose. Originally means to reckon as well. To count, in other words, to count up numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Then it means to con consider or think. So this means I think that you, se, are a nine a cowboy bukalon okay um, here again we can look at the alternative when the subject of the verb of thinking in this case and the subject of the verb of the embedded sentence are the same i think that i am a cowboy you're going to say nomizo bukalos a nine okay you don't have to express the subject because it's the same and then the predicate is going to be a predicate nominative because it's really that the subject is the nominative subject of the sentence, right? That's why if we had a subject, okay, it would be it would be in the in the nominative case because they're the same, okay? All right, does it, does it make some sense? I hope so. <laughs> okay, so, so you have to be careful and watch out for this alternative. Okay, it doesn't happen that often, but it can happen. All right. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the last example, which is the example that's most like English. And this is a new verb as well, the verb lego, which is actually a very common verb in Greek, means to say. Um, and and uh, so you can have a word that's like English that. It's usually haughty, but you can also use the, the conjunction host, which we've seen has other meanings, right? Host with a, a subjunctive or the optative introduces a purpose clause. Yeah. Host with uh, with uh, uh, par participle after it introduces a causal clause, right? Like hoya and hata, but host with an indicative after it. Well, let's talk about that, okay? We the standard construction with Lego is to use the 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 keep the verbs in the form that they had in the original sentence. So our example is Lego hati or host bukalos esti. I say that he is a cowboy, okay? okay. Um, if, if the verb, however, is past tense, okay? And the past of Lego, let's give you the aorist of it, it's Alexa, okay? Um, Alexa, hati or hos, okay? Um, either one of the two. <laughs> and then you have an option, okay, of changing the verb in the um, in the indirect sentence to the optative, okay? Um, you keep the, the aspect of the verb the same um, as the original. In other words, what you have to have in mind is the syntax of the direct sentence, okay, in order to figure this out. But since Eston is imperfective aspect, it used AA, okay, the present, so-called present optative or the optative of the of the imperfective aspect in this case, right? 
if it were if it were was a cowboy, in which case you couldn't use Estin, okay? I say he was a cowboy. You would you say Lego Hati Bukalos Agenata, for example, you use the aorist of Eden Lai. Then you could use the the you use the aorist of you say Genoita in the in the Hati clause, okay? There is a difference in what these mean, because you can also use with Alexa, you can also use Estin. You can also keep things the same. And there is a difference in meaning in that when you use the optative, you're not vouching for the truth of what you say. Remember, in, in English, when you, when, you, when you say, I say, I said, comma, quotation marks, he is a cowboy, then you're quoting somebody's words, mm -hmm. literally. But if you say, I said that he was a cowboy, it, you may or may not be literally quoting those words, right? Okay, you're, you may be giving a summary, right? And so that's what the optative implies. You're, you're giving the gist of it, but it may not be actually what was said. Okay? Right. All right. Um, we're going to explore some more of the consequences of this in the next video. Okay, but that's the basics of, a, of the way in which you do embedded sentences or indirect statements in Greek.